All right, um, we are now going to derive the labor demand in our matching model. Um, so we've seen how to compute the labor supply, which gives us the number of people who are able to work given um, their preferences, so given how many people want to participate and given the structure of the labor market, the matching, um, the matching function, as well as um, separation from jobs. Today we turn to the labor demand. So the labor demand is going to give us the number of workers that firms want to hire given um, the wage prevailing on the labor market as well as um, the labor market tightness. Um, so let's go and see how we can compute this labor demand. Um, so, uh, first we have to understand how firms are structured. So you remember we saw that um, if we think about a representative firm, so that means that all the firms in the economy or all the firms in the labor market are the same and we can just represent them with just one firm. So if we think about a representative firm, um, our representative firm will have L worker. Okay. That's L workers because we've said that there are L workers who are employed in the economy. And uh, here with our firm, that's how much we have. So what's really important to um, to realize is that in this type of um, sorry, in this type of labor market, we're going to have uh, two types of workers in firms. Okay, so on the one hand, we will have typical types of workers, um, so workers who use inputs to produce stuff that the firm can sell. Okay, and we'll have n of this number of workers and these workers are going to be what we call producers. So what the producers do is that obviously as the name indicates they produce goods sold by um, the firm. Okay? And so we're going to have n of them. In addition, and that's a very specific feature of a market with matching uh, with a matching structure, we're going to have recruiters. And so we'll have R of them. And so what are these recruiters? These are, if you want, human resource uh, workers who um, devote time and effort to hire uh, new workers and, and fill vacancies. So they spend time and effort to fill vacancies. Because you remember, in a matching market, firms are always losing workers. And if they want to maintain a constant size, they have to, const to constantly um, advertise vacancies. Now, filling these vacancies is not costless. It takes time and effort uh, from the human resource workers and the recruiters. You know. um, so that's, just, um, that's pretty obvious. In, in real life, if you want to fill a vacancy, well, first, you have to write up the vacancy, you have to post the vacancies. Once the vacancy is posted, you're going to receive a lot of CVs from applicants. You have to read all these CVs, screen them. You have to make a list of qualified applicants. Then you have to interview these applicants, uh, many of them. Sometimes you have several rounds of interviews. Then you have to select you know, the best applicants. You have to write up the contract for the applicant. So firms spend a good amount of uh, labor uh, constantly filling uh, their vacancies. Um, and so to capture that cost, um, which is going to actually play an important role all the, all the way from the description of the model to the policy prescription that come out of the model. Um, so we'll, have, we'll need to have, this, uh, we need to have this, these recruiters that are here. Okay? Um, so, firms has two types of workers. Again, of course, uh, this all uh, adds up to the total number of workers. 
So here, as we can see, we obviously have that the total number of workers is the number of recruiters plus the number of uh, producers, obviously. Okay, um, so we have our producers that produce goods and uh, you know produce goods and services that are sold by the firm, and we have the recruiters that are going to um, spend time and effort um, to fill uh, vacancies. Uh, in terms of notation, so we have L, N, and R. Uh, the number of vacancies that uh, firms are going to post is we're going to call it V. So that's the number of vacancies that are um, you know, posted at any point in time. Another uh, bit of notation, we have a parameter that we are going to introduce here. Uh, that parameter, we call it R, the positive, uh, the positive number. Um, R is what we call the recruiting cost. Okay, um, and uh, that recruiting cost, it's telling us, it captures the number of recruiters uh, required to keep a vacancy open. Um, Open uh, per unit time. Okay, so this is it's telling us at any point in time, if you want to have one vacancy open, you need to have our recruiters working on it. So that's going to be per unit time. Okay, uh, all right. So these are uh, two other notations, two other pieces of notation that we'll uh, we'll need to analyze a level of them. Okay, um, so this is a setup. So we have these firms. They post vacancies to recruit workers. Uh, they have a recruiting cost. Okay. Another parameter that we had introduced before that would play uh, an important role here, you remember, is S. That's our job separation rate. We had already seen, uh, seen that, which gives us the number of workers who leave the firm per unit time. Okay. Um, so that's something we had, uh, we had 